Everyone, welcome to Tank Out. I'm C Fall with MVP. MVP, I'm holding this lovely box of Cinnamon Toast Crunch with Rey Mysterio on the cover. He's going to the Hall of Fame. Yes. What is the influence you think he has on professional wrestling? Uh, Rey Mysterio is the greatest luchador of all time. I mean, what? Excuse me. Uh, he's he's okay, folks. Yeah. Uh, what more can you say? I mean, his influence on professional wrestling. There, it, 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 when you go to Mexico, every gift shop, every kiosk, every store his wrestling mask is there it's the most counterfeited wrestling mask on the planet oh no so I mean he is the one of the most recognized superstars in the world and he brought Lucha to the masses and I mean he, his, his handle is 619 I am Lucha you know and you can't dispute it who is a greater more famous luchador than Rey Mysterio I don't think anybody Put this down for a second. So obviously WrestleMania is coming up. I sorry I threw that down. MVP didn't like me throwing down some Minnesota's crunch. He's a serial guy, I can tell. Um, but WrestleMania, Omas, Brock Lesnar. Is if Brock shows up with the tractor and tries to run over Omas, is he just gonna put his hand up and just spin it with his fingers? That's how big he is, right? Omas is is a, a freak of nature. Seven foot three, four hundred and ten pounds, and it's it's impressive when I watch him train. The things that he's able to do, and the things that he just takes for granted you know like we think oh, I, I, you know this, this thing's heavy I need a couple guys to move it no mas just oh, let me move this out of the way you know um, Brock Lesnar is a, a force of nature in his own right one of the biggest strongest uh, most skilled dominant superstars that WWE has ever seen however Brock Lesnar has never crossed swords with somebody the likes of Omas Omas is bigger and stronger and more athletic than any giant that's ever preceded him in this company. Brock Lesnar's never had to face anybody like Omos, and in Brock Lesnar's career, we've never ever seen him reverse until he faced off with Omos, and now we've seen him back down twice. And Undertaker recently on a podcast said that Omos, he sees a lot of Andre the Giant in him. He sees so much potential in Omos, and that's going to be a, a tip of the hat, because Undertaker doesn't just say good things about you out in the open for no reason. And Undertaker has taken a personal interest in the development of Omas as well. So, you know, to, to the people who want to be detractors to Omas, uh, AJ Styles took Omas under his wing. AJ, Smile, AJ Styles is the first ballot Hall of Famer. Uh, a legendary, iconic figure like The Undertaker has taken an interest in Omas. Myself, you, uh, you don't have people of that caliber taking interest in somebody if they're not special. And Omas has only been doing this for a few years now. He's only 30 years old. So he's got a decade ahead of him, at least. A decade of absolute dominance. And he's still learning. you know. And, and in a few years, once he has a little bit more experience under his belt, he'll be unstoppable. It's true. And I know everyone always asks you about the Hurt Business, and we were all so sad when it ended abruptly, it felt like. Heading into WrestleMania after the pandemic, we had fans, and the Hurt Business kind of fell apart before we got there. What was the plan, and are there other plans to bring back the Hurt Business? Because I keep seeing backstage interviews, and I see you and Shelton and Cedric talking. I'll say this. I think is an, and I've been saying this all morning. It's an absolute travesty that a two-time WWE champion, an athletic specimen the likes of Bobby Lashley, does not have a match at WrestleMania. It's inexcusable that Bobby Lashley doesn't have a match at WrestleMania. However, you know who does have a match at WrestleMania? Omas. And I've said this before. I'll say it again. Before Bobby. Bobby Lashley and I united, his career was floundering. Then with me, he became a two-time WWE champion. And then he decided he didn't need me anymore. He got the big head, he kicked me to the curb, and somehow I was made the asshole in this whole situation. But Bobby left me, I didn't leave Bobby. Uh, so, I've made several overtures to Bobby. Shelton and Cedric have come back on board. And uh, I have, Bobby, 
You have my number. Let's do business. Hurt business style. Now, obviously, heading into that pandemic, WrestleMania, uh, all audiences are loud back in the building. Bobby was the first match, but it poured out before it even happened, and that WrestleMania felt like it might not happen. What were the feelings backstage with you and Bobby heading into this? Because obviously, there's feelings at the same time going into this, going, is this going to happen? Yeah, well, I mean, we were standing right there at Gorilla, ready to go out. When they say, whoa, whoa, hold on, hold on, we got a, it was a, a lightning issue, and, and we had to wait. So, I, I know what it is as a competitive athlete to be you know amped up and ready to go and then you got to sit and wait i mean that's like oh man to 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 cut off that that flow of adrenaline and 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 then to have to stay warm and loose and then restart it up you know whenever they say okay we're ready now and then well wait a minute i need to get my juices flowing again so it, it's difficult it's, it, it was difficult but bobby was so at that time so focused and so uh he had a laser-like focus, and his intensity was unmatched, so I had no worries. Okay, because I know getting into that was a little scary because you saw Samoa Joe, Michael Cole, and Ponchos, and it, it was it was looking bad heading into that Rumble, I mean, WrestleMania. But one final question, with Rey Mysterio going to the Hall of Fame, who do you want to go in next year? Is there someone on, in your brain that you think deserves it now? Uh, I, don't, I don't worry about that. I, I, I like to just sit back and relax and, and find out, like everybody else, who the Hall of Fame is. Uh, uh, nominees are or not nominees uh, inductions. inductions thank you inductees and uh, and I, I like to enjoy it and celebrate it with everyone else I, it's not up to me to decide who deserves it and who does it I, I let the the people who make those selections make those selections and and I, I cheer and enjoy them and I know that uh, eventually uh, all of those who are deserving will find their way actually one final question I saw on an airplane that someone sat next to you with their shoes off and their socks were just hanging out um, hopefully on the way home that doesn't happen to you again because I saw a hurricane involved with the situation on, on Twitter as well is that a pet peeve no shoes keep your shoes on on the airplane right I mean I, I generally I think people should keep their shoes on on the airplane but this guy was egregious and that he didn't just kick his shoes yeah, off then he put his feet up and we're in first class man yeah. and you have no class uh -huh. you know? and, and it was very unfortunate that I had a glass of orange juice that I set on my armrest and accidentally spilled it onto him and it was it, it was very very unfortunate that that happened, but I mean, it was also unfortunate that he had his seat up. You know, so I felt like maybe it was instant karma kind of thing. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, MVP. And Omas, taking down Brock Lesnar at WrestleMania. Always a pleasure. And you always look dapper, as always, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. I appreciate it.